to account for the differences the, for the variations that uh, don't really have an explanation. And that can be a, a very difficult thing to do, is if somebody doesn't really have an explanation minor uh, sort of shift or, or, or something like that, then uh, now you're dealing with an anomaly you have that this is where your next level of research is. This is not you off, but your next level of research is to go into the anomaly and say, well, why is this anomaly here? And you have a number of contributing factors, and some will be more important than others, and not all at the same time. <laughs> You'll have sometimes the factors not necessarily lining up the way you anticipate they line up. And this is sort of the same thing with uh, CBD, is that the factors that affect CBD don't always line up with CBD. I'm just adjusting my mirrors a bit more. And this, if you're only looking at sort of the, we'll call the, the, uh, uh, the approved data, the official data, which is heavily redacted, in other words, you're not doing your own research, then things become a little little uh, skewed. And this is why you still have the fear, this is why you still have the masks, um, the vaccinations don't seem to be working, this is why you have to get your second, the third, and eventually it looks like they're going to have a fourth dose. You're going to have to, think, you're gonna have it getting, you're gonna have to get <clears throat> your vaccination every month. They'll be vaccinated. Because they're, good that they're not reading the data properly. You see the thing, the, the data, which is, which is basically what we we'll call the distribution of illness. It's not an average, it's a distribution. And that's, you can't average a distribution tr uh, chart. Things that are distribution, you can't average. You can find the median point, you can, but you cannot do... Uh, you cannot do... Um, an average and in this case here you're seeing that the median distribution points are all around the seasons and they're predicting the fourth wave or whatever this wave is going to be as to be the most uh, virulent wave that, that, that things are going to but the thing is every time they predict that they, they never actually meet their predictions but uh, the news never goes back and backs in and corrects it they never correct their mistakes and again this, this is what Lionel Long talks about in terms of you know the, uh, the 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 sock puppet uh, media, but the sock puppet sock, sock puppet media has no real sense of any sense of reality. Neither the the, the so-called top doctors. The top doctor is simply a title. There is no reality to top doctor. So what what happens now is you you having because we're in a conceptual universe now. We're not in a real universe. Everything is an illusion. sense of reality. So you can make up anything you want to make up, as long as people agree with you. And this is what we see happening. We see this sort of, you know, and again, we see the same thing with drivers. Why do drivers need to weave in and out of traffic to find the fastest route? Well, because the ones I've been with have racing gloves and believe and believe the professional drivers. Here's an 
another pro, here's another professional driver that comes around there. We see the we see the speed limit is posted, but everyone ignores it. There is no police around to do anything about it. But the thing is, this is always the case. Unknowns, there are always uncertainties, and the thing is, this is what we don't hear from both the anti vaxxers and the vaxxers. Remember, there's two sides to this not only are there the anti vaxxers, but there's also the vaxxers. Both sides are working off of public information that is not fully accurate. The accurate information is classified as uh, top secret, it's, it's not being released, and so what they're seeing is they're seeing a redacted form of data. And you cannot make any degree of scientific value evaluation on the on the redacted data. So what they'll do is they'll come out and say, "Well, top doctor so and so. I am a professional. I'm a professional. I'm a doctor. I know." <coughs> and the credentials. Credentials. Let's, let's take a break here. There are a lot of assholes like that guy with the loud truck in the world. And unfortunately, these assholes tend to tend to move towards the government. Uh, and this is the way they exist. They're assholes in the environmental movement. They're assholes in the. Uh, They're never happy. And I think they'll find the tiniest thing. They'll find the smallest thing that will piss them off. And it doesn't have to be anything large. In many cases, it's a misunderstanding. But yet they're pissed off for an entire day. From morning to night. And I think it's the, the, these people who are pissed off, these assholes, are not happy. They never live a happy life. As a matter of fact, I would argue that they don't have no idea what happiness is. Because they spend so much time being miserable and angry. And it's the only thing they focus on. How do they ever notice when they're having a good day, when things are nice and fun? Because they never, they never remember it. like that the assholes and the perpetually angry. The only thing that they see is their misery. And this is what Lionel talks about the people who are on Facebook, who need to signal and, and, and show everything. And this is what a large chunk of liberals do. These are the woke people who do this so-called 
virtual signal, virtual signal to the frequency. And in, in, in the terms of the uh, dictionary definition, it's an affectation. Affectation is your pretense. <laughs> affectation is a negative, it's derogatory. Because it's the effect that you're having on other people, your personal effect that you're having on other people, that is fundamentally negative in, and false. It's a pretense. It's not, it's not a pretense is something that is pretend. You're pretending to be humane. You're pretending to be this or that. And you have really, uh, in many cases for these people, there's almost no substance behind them. Thank you. That is fundamentally a pretext of a thing to pretend. And that's why I say that, you know, what, you know, that mean that a teacher who, is a, who has this pretense uh, isn't a nice person. They're just, they're just not, they're just fundamentally not reliable. And so in many cases, you have to learn how to sort of live on your own, to be self sufficient, teach yourself, cook for yourself, you know, fend for yourself. This doesn't necessarily mean you have to be a selfish person. Person, but it just it, it, how you behave really is going, and what you do for yourself is really going to affect how you live. I mean, if I went out and ate every day the food that I typically eat, I'd never be able to afford it. I'm able to eat what I eat in terms of a good, high-quality food. Uh, this is particularly the Pan Asian food, which goes all the way from the Middle East to uh, uh, and to uh, Eastern Asia. Uh, I'm able to eat it because I learned how to I learned how to cook it. I learned from my grandmothers and aunties. It all came from these villages, and there were no recipes, so you had to watch, learn, learn their technique, and then try it out yourself eventually. Okay, the first few times, <laughs> you know, you ended up ordering out because things just came up horrible. But after a while, you just sort of learned what to do. And then the food became good. But if you're afraid to make any move with the people, you're just going to grow up and people are going to say, oh, he doesn't know how to cook, or she doesn't know how to cook. Well, then, you know, you're not going to do anything. And you're allowing your fear of what could happen to overwhelm you. And this is sort of the same thing with, with, with CBD. It's the fear that's overwhelming everybody. This is where, as I said, anomalies creep into the system, and you begin to view things that uh, typically don't make sense. And instead of a number of factors lining up to give you an explanation, you have just maybe one or two factors lining up to give an explanation, but other factors.
into an interesting period of time, a period of almost complete humanist destruction. We're at the chapter, the humanist chapter of uh, Crime and Punishment, where the humanist begins to destroy everything around him and will eventually destroy himself. I mean, this is this is the whole thing going going into line LeBron in terms of his, his issues with uh, Afghanistan. And that Afghanistan was a non-issue to begin with. The system we provide, the system that we offer, the life that we offer, is so degraded that there is no fundamental difference between the Taliban and the Democrats in terms of the quality of life you have under them. This isn't seen in Baltimore or any of the American cities where the Democrats prevail. There are lockdowns, there are places you can and can't go, there, there are uh, just tyrannical behavior in addition to the level of crime that exists in the environment. difference between the Democrats and the Taliban. There's none. And so what happens is when you sit down and look at it like that, there is no fundamental difference uh, in terms of the quality of life that the people were living in Afghanistan. Nothing changes. And the thing is, the only thing that does change is that, okay, yeah, we see the, we see the overt troops being pulled out, but let's not forget there was an entire covert program in there too. The covert program didn't change. We still see the drone strikes, so the covert program hasn't changed. The only thing that's been removed from Afghanistan is the overt program. And yet again and again, you go, oh, this, this, is, this is what China is doing. China is all... But the thing is, China hasn't done anything. And again, it's the same people, over and over again, Saying something, making accusations without providing any proof. Oh, I heard a guy, and I know this person here, and I read in this newspaper there. Well, did you actually go and, and investigate and see what was actually going on? Did you actually do the investigation, or are you relying on other reports? So one side is doing it to the other. One side creates fake news, and other side, the other side creates fake news as well, but in their favor. And it's like it's like it's like this repeatedly. into a new era of humanism, leaving an older era, which was primarily Republican, we're moving it, now moving into the uh, liberal left era of humanism, which is complete destruction. We'll see a repeat of the 70s, we'll see a repeat of the prohibition laws that you had in the 19, 1930s. It's not really anything new, it's just different in terms of some of the particulars. Before it was alcohol, that you couldn't eat in particular restaurants, and so you had speak easy and legal this and legal that. Uh, and then, uh, now it's a uh, CBD. And unless you have your passport and proper stamp, you can't go into this restaurant, and you can't go into that restaurant, legally speaking. That doesn't mean that these restaurants are going to be operating, aren't going to be operating illegally. It just means that typically uh, you won't be able to go to them unless you know somebody or you get inside the door. 
You'll have to hop three times to get the password and then away you go. <laughs> You're now into the uh, into this Ill illicit world of dining. The illegal world of food. Because well, you can't be with other people. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a criminal offense now to associate with anybody. And of course there's the aggressive huggers. You know, they're going to be put in prison. And the thing is with, with the Jews who are religious. And the, the, primarily I use, when I use the term Jew, I use the term in a religious sense. I don't mean anyone who is of Jewish descent who doesn't fundamentally believe. They're of Jewish descent, but they're not fundamentally Jews. So we'll talk about that in that sense. But I will come back and just redefine things. Because they need to, because people are just so flip out, fully, fully less so. Do you think the Jews are gonna get are gonna get off on this? Their synagogue is closed down. You should see what the, the, the Jews are not going to escape this way. It's there, they're just not being what happens this time, they're not being used in the manner they were in World War II. But they're still being used, they're still being they're still being targeted. Uh, to, you know, as part of the whole program. So now this is the this was said before, this is repeating again of World War II, this is the repeat of uh, within, the, within the context of the Holy Roman Empire. Uh, in which case Jews were indeed targeted. Well, the thing is, 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 is what's going to go on next, how things are going to play themselves out. In many ways, I'm kind of in the mind. I'm kind of in the mind. Okay, let's get the, let's let's get this over with. Let's get the let, let's get the Chinese in here. Let them take over and get on with their lives. I, mean, I don't have any problems with the Chinese. I know people in China. I'm on WeChat. I know people in China. They don't have any problem with the Chinese. It does seem to be a, a, a number of conservatives who have this particular issue uh, with uh, China. But yes, myself, I have no particular issue. So this is where we've come into it, and so now the only choice left in terms of our understanding is to move back at the Gnosis and understand that the world is, that the world beyond in some form or another will be a better place. Now, as I said before, in the standard Gnosis, which includes Western Christianity, there is almost really no fundamental connection with God. You have some uh, you're living in a cloud, you're living in heaven, you're with your family, but there is no fundamental connection with God. However, in the East, you were all integra in integra we were all integrated with God. We've become one with God, not the universe. So we don't speak of the universe. We speak of God in, in this sense. You go to church because you have an obligation. And that was it. it. When I go to church, I'm going to my other house. It's like going to my parents' house or going to my, you know, I was staying at my place or whatever. It's like going to somebody's house and having a family meal or family dinner. Because well, although we have icons on the wall, we don't actually worship the icons. What we do is we, they're there, the icons are there because they are place markers. Uh, for uh, the spiritual beings that are relatives who we can't see because we're spiritually blind. We, our spiritual senses are dull to the point where we need assistance. So a lot of the trappings of the church are that. They're there to assist us in uh, our uh, spiritual disabilities. 